Hello and welcome back to Bubble Buddies, the podcast that is dedicated to bringing you the most mediocre of NWHL coverage. Tonight we have a very special guest. We have Paige Martin. Uh, Paige went to school with Nick and I. Paige, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, hey everybody. Yeah, I am absolutely thrilled to be here. My name is Paige, like Claire said, and um, I, uh, when the world, you know, was what it used to be, I worked as a sideline reporter in the OHL, um, and then also a columnist for CBC doing human interest stories in the OHL as well. Um, and now I'm working as a writer for uh, an insurance company and working from home and loving life. Perfect. Yeah, so tonight's episode, in case you couldn't get the gist of it, Paige, um, we're going to be talking about women in sport because we do have a little bit of gap um, until the next Toronto Six game. They play on Thursday, I believe it is, in the semifinals. Um, yeah, so we're just going to get into some women in sport. So I guess, Paige, um, we want to hear a little bit about you. So how did you get into hockey? Um, well, something that actually a lot of people always kind of, it's either between, you know, a chirp or, you know, teasing me or question me about is the fact that I actually never played hockey. Um, I grew up playing basketball, um, but hockey has always been my favorite sport to watch. And I have an older brother um, and then, you know, my dad as well, huge hockey fans. So there was no doubt that every single night that there was a hockey game on, that's what we were watching in the Martin household. Um, and I loved it like, like, and very quickly picked it up. I think I remember I was five years old sitting with my dad asking him what offside was. And I was like, sweet, I love this game. That's amazing. Um, and then essentially once um, I wanted to play basketball in university, but the program that I did didn't allow it um, because it was a collaborative program between Western and Fanshawe University and College. Um, and then I figured that I could actually talk about sports and that was awesome. So that's how I got into sports broadcasting and there was an opportunity to join it was the junior B team in London, the London Nationals. Um, and so I did that three years volunteering as their host and sideline reporter. And then an opportunity came up with the Knights and it was essentially the very um, same position just with um, you know, an audience that actually watches the games. So that was exciting. Um, and I've been there and it, uh, it was, you know, it's just, it's been incredible and such a learning experience for me in so many different ways. Um, and also just like an absolute honor, I think as well, because London takes their OHL team incredibly seriously. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So have you had a chance to kind of catch some of the NWHL action the past week and a bit? Yes. And you know what I loved was how much everybody else has as well. I think like I was looking forward to it and all the hype, like follow very closely um, the PWHPA, of course. And then with the NWHL actually being able to play, that's been amazing. Um, and then seeing how many people also have been um, and the amount of, you know, viewers that are tuning into the stream. I think I, I saw that on the weekend and I was just, it was, it was encouraging, um, especially with everything that's been, been happening and, encouraging and exciting and also kind of like a see you know yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah I think with that um the Boston Buffalo game I saw they had like 18,000 people tuning in on the stream or something like that and like like I tweeted out that the Ottawa Senators had like 12,000 fans at, at, on average in their arena so like it shows you know people do care about these athletes and like these women and what they're doing of course. And there, you know, it's, it's incredible. There's so much behind it as well. And I think it's like, you know, uh, that's actually hilarious with the Ottawa Senators and the proof is in the pudding. The numbers don't lie. <laughs> and the hockey, it's just, it's good hockey. Like somebody, you watch a lot of hockey. So I guess, um, like, what are your thoughts on the quality of play, especially considering that a lot of the Olympians are in that PWHPA? Yeah, that's one thing that I think like is so important to keep in mind. And also that a lot of these women have other jobs like this is, it has to be kind of like their secondary thing as much as it's their passion and their life that they've always known. Um, this is not what they get to wake up and train and spend all of their days doing like, you know, the the players that we see in the NHL. Um, and so I think like, I just love that. Um, it's fast and there's a lot of skill and that's what I've really enjoyed about it as well um so just being able to see that and especially like the fact that it's women's sports um you know I watch a lot of junior hockey my fair share and so um yeah any chance to hop on on the women's game is my favorite anybody else I feel like I'm kind of dominating the question yeah. period here <laughs> yeah well I mean I think one of the things that uh, 
is the most obvious that springs to mind for me, Paige, is, you know, knowing you, and Claire can attest to this as well, following you on Twitter, is I know one of the things um, that I find really inspiring about you is you have your little fan, you know, your, uh, it, it, can, can you explain a little bit about background for that, first of all? Yeah, so um, I believe you're referring to Jordan, um, yeah, who's become right. my little sidekick in Mini Me, <laughs> and I absolutely adore her. I can't wait for her to see this because, like Claire, you know, she's going to be tuning in right away. Oh, yeah. um, Jordan is longtime Knights fan. I actually first, I didn't even meet her, but this was when you know I kind of first got introduced to her was at a sports celebrity dinner. Um, she was up on stage next to a table of Olympians like it was, she was literally having dinner with Christine Sinclair and um Christine Simpson so like absolute you know just you know those are your dinner guests awesome Jordan I think was six at the time um and so I kind of knew of her from then and then she was always at the Knights games and a couple months later um when I got the position with the Knights I was walking back I literally had gotten like some pizza and it's the third period and I'm walking back with pizza in my hand and I see Jordan she had won a contest so she's back behind uh where like our set is and I was like oh my goodness that's Jordan so I was like hey you're the celebrity and then she just like froze and was like mom mom and I was like oh maybe that was uh, who is she looking at like what did I scare her like what's going on and she was like would it actually be okay if I like took a photo with you I was like can I take a photo with you queen like yes um and from then like that was the beginning of our friendship and sisterhood um she kept coming back to the games and her mom would always shoot me a message before being like hey we'll be at the game can we come down and see you yes of course obviously then there was the infamous moment where uh, Jordan came down with this headset that she had made at home with like Beats headphones and some arts and crafts that she put together and it was just like that was kind of a moment for me where I was like oh my goodness whoa this is cool um, and then continuously just kind of saw the way that she realized like hey you know she's very much wants to be a professional hockey player but she's also told me that I actually also want to be on air and wear a headset like you and that just like means you know so much to me and you know just like there's so many little girls that get to see that and um yeah yeah so that's that's kind of i mean we we already claire and i already wanted to speak to you just because we know you and because <laughs> you're a woman who is killing it in sports but one of the things i saw very early on in the bubble um, I was trying to find it earlier. It's a little too far back in my Twitter likes, but it was uh, a, an NWHL reporter who was saying how so many uh, players are saying like, oh, they get messages on Instagram and stuff from little girls who are like really thrilled to see someone who looks like them and is, you know, uh, getting so much, you know, representation and getting so much, you know, publicity with the, with the bubble, like Claire and you were saying earlier with how many people were watching on the weekend. Um, I, I just, I, I wonder how, you know, what it means to you to see, uh, uh, you know, people like that, like to be, to be, a, to be a role model for, for Jordan and then to see, you know, the, the kind of uh, the mirror image of that now with the NWHL. Yeah, I think that's kind of what I tried to allude to earlier, earlier is it's so incredible that these women, you know, have a place to play and then also that there's people watching and then there's almost kind of this responsibility that comes with that because of how much that visibility matters. And I think that if you were to ask a lot of the players within the NWHO, um, when they were growing up, how much they saw on TV and they might tell you like the Olympics, um, which you know, that would be every four years for hockey in particular. Um, and so like, that's, that's like nothing. Um, and so the fact that now there's girls who, you know, get to turn on a stream and see this and say, oh, they're doing this as part of, you know, their career um, and they've worked for this and they have a place to play, that's incredible. Um, and I think that, yeah, there's just so much to be said in, it's incredible that there is a space to play, but also that responsibility of knowing like how many little girls are seeing that and going, oh, that's a possibility because I really only see the NHL, but now I see this. So that's something that I can strive for. Um, and, you know, and I've, I've spoken to a few um, 
a few girls that you know are close to age and us who are you know playing in the NCAA um, and they're kind of like well this is this is kind of it for me right now like this is the highest level that I can I can go and then of course like being able to make the national team but again that comes with the you know strictly national tournaments and then the Olympics um, so I think that it's just like it's it's exciting and it's encouraging and it's just like yeah such a such a cool responsibility to be able to have and it speaks volumes and it opens up so many doors of dreams for for young girls yeah i think i and i think for me that's kind of the thing that's that really strikes me about you about you and about working with claire as well um i kind of i've always kind of thought of myself just like an regular uh you know kind of like common man type thing and like i was always like yeah hey it would be it'd be cool if you know a woman was in the nhl or it'd be cool to, it's cool to see women in sports but um you know what motivated me i guess to get kind of involved in it is seeing the the impact you have on someone like jordan seeing the impact that you know claire's having working in sports and you know i just i don't know i think it's i think it's really inspiring that you know what you're doing so it, you. i'm 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 very very excited to be speaking with with uh with Paige martin today and you know also also kind of made my dreams come true during uh during the night's playoff run back uh back when we were in school but yeah with uh with bouchard right <laughs> yeah first first interview with uh with a, uh, you know, future NHL or NHL, or he played NHL games that year. Yeah, Curtis well, I think that also there's a lot, just to go off of what you say, Nick, like there's so much to say about, you know, what me and Claire can do for the next generation um, just by working in sports. But I think that's something also that, um, you know, I really had my eyes open to was when we were back in school doing our master's and like even having someone like Claire, who's also passionate about sports, because I also, you know, kind of like growing up, meaning like through high school, and then even in my early, you know, years of university, didn't really have friends who cared about sports the way that I did, or who even like, you know, would give it the time of day and would just be like, oh yeah, sports are your thing. But then suddenly it was like, sweet, here's another girl who cares about sports and also is, you know, wants to be within journalism um, and, and talk about it that way. And so like that was another encouraging element for, for me and the fact that that like literally, you know, Claire moves across the country to make her dreams come true. Like that's another unreal element. I love that. <laughs> yeah, well, and just like going off of that too, like, I don't know about you, but for me growing up, I didn't really get a lot of female role models in hockey. I think I was in grade eight when I really started playing house league hockey and it was 2010 Olympics. And I was like, oh, Marie-Philippe Poulin. So I would have been about 13 before I really saw like a female athlete that I could connect with. And it's really mm -hmm. crazy to see like Jordan, you said she was like six when you first met her you know, from such a young age, they've got such impressive role models now. And it's, you know, if you can see it, you can be it. And it's so important to these girls to see that. Yeah. And like the younger, the better, the more that they're going to see that as being normal, right? Because it's like, they've grown up with it and they see it and they know that it's possible. And those people are telling them it's possible. And for them to be also watching, um, you know, those players fight to be able to, to have a place to play. Like there's just, there's, there's so many layers here that I get so excited about. <laughs> Like, and it never ends too. It doesn't matter how old you are. You know, it's, it's equally as impressive for people like our age to see this league. And I did have a friend, we were watching one of the NWHL games and they go, oh, this must be professional women's sports because there's a female announcer. And like, it's just small things like that where it creates not just like the on ice jobs, but you know, like we have Digit Murphy behind the bench. We've got on ice yep. announcers, you know, we've got all these women kind of coming together to make this happen. Um, it's not just mm -hmm. role models for young girls. And I think Paige was there as well when I finally actually got to meet Marie-Philippe Poulain. That, we that was a magical moment. I think about that so much. Like, if you want to see an example of pure joy in someone's life, it was that moment. <laughs> that moment. Like, I wasn't young. Like, I was, we would have been, what, 22? And I was just yeah. face lighting up like I just met my hero because I had. And it, so it just goes to show it's not just for young girls. Like, people our age as well can be find inspiration in this and, you know, like upwards until however old you want to be. It's, it's inspirational. Cameron, you've been oh, so you guys have talked, yeah, you've talked a fair bit about uh, uh, the the growth and progress of uh, women's sports and about uh, 
representation in the industry. Where do you think there's room for growth in the future in terms of both? Ooh, um, ooh that's a big question. I think that there's room for growth everywhere. Um, can I say that? <laughs> I think that there's room for growth, like, um, definitely on air because that's what you see. And that's kind of definitely something that's easy to pick and be like, there should be more, you know, female reporters on air. Yes, that's a fact. Um, there should also be more females on the production team. Um, and there should, you know, like, like for companies to be able to take that initiative, um, and there's kind of that line of like, well, we'll hire who's best at the job. Yes, you should, um, but you should also be interviewing who could potentially be best at the job and allow that, that door to open as well. And so I think that, um, Cam, to, to answer your question in a very broad way, um, I think that it's encouraging to see progress that's being made and continuously like um, I look up to someone like Carolyn Cameron who's on Sportsnet and hosts uh, Hockey Central um, and the fact that you know she's at the desk and she's hosting that is like so badass can I say that yeah, yeah. Is that cool oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you know because like for so long and um, you know she'll say it as well Christine Simpson was kind of like that only face that you know we saw as you know a woman um, especially within hockey um, and I think like the, the progress that's being made there is happening, um, slowly but surely. And I think that it's just, I feel encouraged often because I feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's only up from here really, I, I can say, yeah. Claire, what, what do you think about that? I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Um, I just think that as it continues to grow, like it just builds and builds you know, like it's kind of exponential in that way where we started off with that one face and, you know, every year it feels like there's more women kind of coming on board. And it's again, like that textbook example of if you can see it, um, you can be it. And as we get more faces, there'll be more women applying to these jobs, you know, like because they believe in themselves and they've seen it happen. And so they know that they can. Um, so the more faces we get, the more people we're going to kind of be applying into this and just getting into it. Um, and like, it's not just on women as well to kind of make themselves available. Like there needs to be some initiative you know, from leagues like the NHL, um, kind of reaching out to that female fan base and not necessarily tokenizing them. Like, you know, women don't want pink jerseys. You know, women's apparel needs to be the same. Um, just doing stuff like that to make people feel more welcome and more safe uh, and just being more inclusive overall. I think, you know, there's a lot of room to grow, but it's been, it's been great to see the growth even just in the last year. You know, seeing like mm -hmm. Sportsnet and CBC pick up highlights from the NWHL when, you know, it was an issue with the CWHL that those, those clips and those games never got shown. So just seeing the growth in that respect has been really great. And I'm really excited to see kind of how that goes forward. Yeah. And then yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of speaking of visibility. I can actually see you guys on my screen again, which is a good sign, but always a good sign. I mean, <laughs> mentioned... Oh, he's frozen. Nope. <laughs> he's grounded. Cameron, can you see that? <laughs> I can kind of hear. Only a little bit. Okay, well, can you hear us still now? Yeah? We don't want to waste too much time troubleshooting. Oh, yeah, I can hear. Okay, perfect. Well, yeah, I noticed you mentioned the pink jersey thing. Of course, uh, nobody wants stuff like that because female athletes want to look just like the male athletes because they're, they're, they're just athletes, oh, no. right? They're not different but the thing with that is, is that creating a controversy championship so i mean even if people aren't happy to be wearing stuff like that i think sometimes it can be a good thing in terms of generating publicity yeah and there's also like the whole conversation around attracting fans that might not be fans and it's not even like we don't have to be centering around pink jerseys but i think that there's also the responsibility of not just attracting people who like sports typically. Um, and I think that like, you know, sports are my favorite because of how much they bring people together and why not like actively continuously always try to be reaching outside of like your typical circle, you know? Yeah. And I think that's something that the NWHL has executed well on just with their content in the last week. You know, you see how like fans who maybe not are not necessarily super into hockey, but they've really latched onto the Zamboni. And when the NWHL saw that, they just upped the production value of the Zamboni and they've got the Zam Cam and they've got all that. Um, so that's been great to see them kind of take on initiatives like that. 
and like as well Cameron you said you know the female athletes want to look like the male athletes and their male counterparts and like that's really valid but it, I think it's also important to remember that you know we shouldn't necessarily always be judging female athletes you know based on their success in men's sports like it was great when Kendall Coyne was at the NHL All-Star Game and Sarah Fuller what an amazing story but they're not amazing athletes because they kept up with the men they're amazing athletes all on their own and so I think we need to remember that the NWHL is separate from the NHL you know, and that's a big sticking point I know right now with the PWHPA as well. Um, they're separate and they're doing this on their own and it's, you know, run by women for women. It's, yeah, it's just, I think that's the great, I, what I like about the NWHL personally. Yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> Paige, can you talk a little bit about what a kind of leap of faith it was to, to go on to air? Uh, as the you know the host for one of the biggest teams in the OHL you talked about it or maybe Claire talked about it uh, London loves their OHL hockey mm -hmm. and one of the very first things I remember uh, talking to you about uh, it our year in grad school was you got a, me a nice message from there was a, a gentleman who called into the into the post game show or whatever and said like oh like I was all I was so apprehensive that this this old host was leaving but this Paige Martin, she really knows what she's talking about. So, I mean, that kind of struck me as like, you know, you're really, you're, you're, uh, you got a lot of, a lot of pressure on you. What, what was that kind of like? Yeah, I think that that's something that I can't shy away from admitting is even like, I got the call from the producer um, June. So like the season starts end of August and I got the call in June and I will be fully transparent with you guys. Like I... I overthink things on a good day. Um, and then that was kind of like, oh man, okay, I gotta, I gotta, you know, just level up like a hundred levels here. Like, let's go. Um, and I was freaking out. I remember uh, my very first broadcast for the Knights was their first exhibition game of the season. And um, it was August 31st, 2018. And I was freaking the heck out. Like, couldn't eat. Um, don't really think that I slept um and I remember before like I still lived at home at the time and my parents were just like being so encouraging like you can do this you got this you've been doing this for three years like it's fine also like it's just an exhibition game no one's really watching like it's good it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> um and I get to the rink and I'm just like okay <sighs> very much like hit by you know um walking in there and it's like, like Budweiser Gardens is sweet like it's a such a sweet atmosphere to to be in and I remember walking into the green room um and the first thing that I noticed was you know yeah being the only girl there but I was like okay yeah like whatever I expected this um and then my producer and my co-host were just like so encouraging um and honestly like the the part about the broadcast that makes me the most nervous is the introduction because like it's just me and that's the very first part and so I got to come with energy I got to say my like you know minute or however long I make it well um, and then I got to throw up to the boys and I was like okay if you can remember what day it is who's playing and then what your co-host names are you're good <laughs> <laughs> and so that was kind of one of those things that as soon as I did that I was like oh I did that I'm good, I can do this. Um, and then just like rolling with that. And once I got once I got over that, I was like, okay, I can do it, I'm good, I know what I'm doing. And, and being able to trust myself um, was huge for me because especially like being on air, um, you know, you say things and then you realize that people remember what you say and that's like, very scary sometimes. But also, yeah, the, the um, main kind of audience for London Knights OHL hockey is older men or you know dudes like it's not typically like a, a young female like that's just the reality and so um these you know older guys would they were calling in and one of them left a message being like you know what I was awfully disappointed when I turned on the tv and saw Paige like you guys couldn't have gotten Christine Simpson and I was like this is gonna be a bad season and I kind of was like huh ah. But then like he turned it around and was like, she's really impressed me. She knows her stuff. She's confident. She knows what she's doing. And like, that was, you know, a very roundabout way of like one of the best compliments that I love to talk about. <laughs> um, and so I think that, yeah, it was definitely me acknowledging, like I have the opportunity 
um, to show that like young women can do what the old boys do. Um, and especially like for a crowd that wasn't used to seeing a young girl on air, um, there was kind of that added element, but also like that, I can do this. Like I'm totally, I'm totally fine. And also like, I wanna be able to prove that it's not, it's not me, um, but that there are so many young females who are ready to kick ass on air, on, like on set, whatever it may be. Um, and I think that that's also something that I wanted to keep getting better and better because I recognized that that was almost like a, a responsibility. And then also like, it was when, you know, I, I met Jordan, and it was like, I want to be better for Jordan because like, there's the standard that, you know, hopefully then when, when Jordan, you know, is ready to, to be on air when she grows up that like, there isn't that apprehension and there isn't that like, wonder if she's gonna be good. Like, did they just put her on because she's a pretty face? Like, no, they put her on because she is absolutely phenomenal and knows her stuff and is about to teach you and entertain you throughout the entire game. So, yeah. So, Paige, so one thing you mentioned is just kind of walking in and like being the only girl and that still happens to me. You know, it doesn't help that I'm like the only reporter out here. So when I'm walking into a situation, I kind of always know that I'm gonna be the only girl. Um, but like, what goes through your head still? Like, is that still something that you notice? Because I know for me, like, I always, it's always the first thing that I notice when I walk in a room. Yeah, I think for sure. Um, and maybe you do the same thing. I think that, like, I walk in and I kind of do, like, a quick scan and go, oh, okay. And then it makes me stand a little bit taller. Um, because you, like, you have to, um, if we're just being completely, you know, transparent. And I've, you know, you, you kind of get a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, but also knowing that, like, those individuals can, you know, work as your colleagues in the specific situation that I'm in, like walking into the green room, it's all, you know, media personnel, um, knowing that like, I could start a conversation with someone, learn so much and also have the opportunity to teach them something. Um, and I think that I'm very thankful that I get to be in spaces like that. Some days are, you know, tougher than others, especially when, you know, it's like, there's also scouts that are in the picture. Um, a lot of NHL scouts love to come to London. And so like, just being able to sit down and like eat Domino's pizza with like a <laughs> Pittsburgh scout is just like the most random thing that I just like, we just like are talking. Um, and I've had a couple of them be like, so like, what is your job here? Um, because the only other woman that's in the room, like to, you know, be very you know transparent is, the woman who provides all of the food for the media room. She makes sure that the pizza gets delivered and that the coffee's out. Um, and it's me and her and I, God bless her, like she's amazing. Um, and I think that there's a couple scouts that have been like, yeah, so what, what are you doing here? Um, and then being able to tell them and be like, oh, and I'll be like, yeah, actually, if you look up at the TV in five minutes, our pregame show is gonna start. So like, make sure you tune in. We're gonna actually be talking about Evan Bouchard. We're going to be talking about, you know, whoever it may be. So, Great prospect. <laughs> I looked right at you, Nick, and I was like, that's the first name that's coming to my mind. <laughs> yeah. Claire, what about you? How do you kind of like channel that? Yeah, um, I know when I walk into a room, like I always kind of clock. If there's one other girl, I always tend to gravitate towards her because there is kind of strength and solidarity and strength in numbers. Um, but like mm -hmm. you said, like, you know, there is something kind of almost empowering about being the only girl where you're like, okay, like, you know, I'm going to show these dudes what's up. And just knowing that like, you do have to stand a little bit taller because when you make a mistake, it's not just you making a mistake, it's you making a mistake and it kind of reflects poorly on women in sports. So there is kind of that in the back of the mind that, you know, you do have to kind of like strive for a bit more perfection than you normally would be and you're a little bit more on your toes. Um, but that is something that I kind of enjoy, honestly. Like it used to really stress me out, but now I'm kind of like, I can't wait to kind of prove all these people wrong. You know, I remember there was one time um, I was covering the Western men's hockey team. I think it was back in 2016. We went out to Halifax with the Western Gazette to cover the national championship. And there, I was like the only girl in the press conference, or there was maybe one other girl. And I got to ask a question. And they're like, oh, sweetie, like, you want to ask a question? And I came out with like a question. And the guy was like, oh, like the guy I was talking to one of the coaches was just like, oh, great question. And I was like, yeah, see, see. <laughs> so it is kind of nice. Sweetie. Yeah, I was just like, something like that. It was like, I think he thought he was throwing me a bone, but then I had a good question. So you do have to kind of be ready for those situations, but you know, it can be like a bit disheartening when it happens, but at the end of the day, like how you handle it, you know, it doesn't matter really what they think. 
matters how you feel kind of in that situation and kind of the bigger picture of what you're doing. And it speaks more about, you know, who they are rather than who you are. Like if they're going to be speaking about like, or handling a situation that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, like, and again, in those kind of back rooms where, you know, like you're doing a media scrum or something, that's not always the most visible. There's no girls watching at home kind of a media scrum to see like if you're in the background and if they are televising it, you know, you're not the one on camera. Um, but it does mm -hmm. kind of set a precedent for the people who are in that scrum if they're going to try and talk over you and you speak up, you know, it does, like it is always kind of in the back of the mind that like what you're saying and what you're doing and your actions do kind of trailblaze and they do have kind of bigger ripple effects than you kind of don't always like realize at first. Perfect. Um, so I saw that our 40 minute limit on Zoom has been removed as a gift. Thank you, Zoom. Awesome. So we do have a bit more time. Um, so I was wondering if you would like to talk a bit about the NWHL. I'm curious as to what team you're, uh, you're bandwagoning. Absolutely the Toronto Six. <laughs> no question. Um, like, lo lo you, gotta, you gotta support local, you know? Um, yeah. No, it's so exciting. And also, I got to also say how much I loved, was it your Instagram? I think you put it up on Instagram. Was it yesterday yeah. on the hill? Unreal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, great photo. Retweeted by the Toronto Six. Thank you, Alyssa. Close personal friend of the show. <laughs> oh, she was on, she was on before, right? Yeah, she was on our second episode ever and she helped us kind of preview the team. Um, Cameron, I'm actually, I'm curious to see how you're feeling because Cameron in his uh, preseason rankings had Toronto dead last at the end of the regular season. So Cameron, how how are you feeling about that? If you don't freeze up on us. Oh, I mean, I say every time that uh, I didn't I didn't expect them to be bad. I just didn't know if they'd be good relative to the other teams. But I think it's good to see how good they are. It's a, I mean, it's a Toronto team that has a chance at winning a championship. We don't get to see that that often, so it's good to get the opportunity. <laughs> truth, truth. And, well, on, yeah. Only one panelist had them in the finals. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but one of us had them in the finals. We'll pretend we'll pretend that uh, I didn't have Boston going nine and zero. But uh, actually, that was wrong. Yeah, I think we all did. <laughs> yeah, I think we all. Did. No, I had. Oh no, I did have them going undefeated. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we were all wrong. Proudly wrong. Um, yeah. So, Paige, I guess who's impressed you the most then throughout the tournament um, from the Toronto Six, or you know, in general, if you want to kind of extrapolate. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I feel like I probably will stick to Toronto Six. I will be honest, they're actually the only games that I've tuned into. Um, but actually, um, going off what Cam said, and I feel like Cam, you kind of like, you know, made an ed maybe an educated, you know, I don't want to say guess, but like pick with that in terms of like a team that's just starting, you never know what, you know, they're going to be like. And I think that that's um, been impressive to me. I think that they are, they are fast. Um, and I think that that is, you know, just, just so huge to be able to be able to have and, and to show for. So, um, that's why, yeah, I've been, uh, I'm sorry that I definitely haven't been tuning in as, as much as you guys have. And I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, no need to apologize. <laughs> but some of us are just at home doing nothing. So, you're out in the big world. I'm just watching Twitch at home. So yeah, I've actually, I've been, um, when I had, when I was up skiing the other day and I had my jersey on, I actually had like some people asking me about the team and then like I was in the lift line and it was like a 30 minute lift line. I'm like, I'm just gonna pop up the uh, Buffalo Boston game and see what's going on. Like, it's just been so accessible. Um, I know Cameron's talked a bit about Twitch and just like, you know, the future of kind of sports streaming. Um, and like as somebody who I guess works in, you know, sports TV, like, what do you think about Twitch and that setup? I think it's encouraging um, to be able to see a platform that can host um, and hold and like kind of like handle the volume that it's experiencing. Um, I've actually, I've never streamed something on Twitch before, um, but so far with these games, I've loved it. Um, and I think that it's encouraging specifically for people who work in sports to see like, okay, if that's a platform that can provide the service that it's providing, um, what potential can they have to make it into and like to keep evolving. Um, and I love how accessible, you know, that kind of whole conversation that becomes um, in terms of like, what else can we 
be you know putting on online and streaming and you know where else can we access things so um i think if anything i'm gonna yeah say encouraging both for for the league and how much they're able to broadcast and also like broadcast well qual and like quality broadcasts um and then you know for people who are working in sports for that to you know hopefully evolve so that it can become you know like a an entire an entire production um which it, it already is obviously but even even more so yeah and cameron's our twitch kind of um expert so cameron yeah. if you have any follow-up questions on that yeah well speaking of twitch and the general esports theme i was going to mention this earlier if the connection wasn't garbage but i noticed like the, the wnba is probably one of the biggest female professional leagues in, in the 2k game they actually have the WNBA and WNBA teams, so you can play as them. And in the NHL games, they don't have that. So I think that's something that the NWHL, along with EA Sports, should look into fixing. Like, if we could have NWHL oh, no. teams in the game, then we're watching these players, what they do for the NHL teams. So that's something that can definitely be improved. Well, and I think also like the WNBA is always used as kind of a comparison. Like people are like, well, why don't we just do what the WNBA does? And why isn't it just like the WNBA? I mean, and it goes like, yes, within um, like esports, And then also like you see how well the, the bubble worked for them and how much of an impact their season had within the bubble. Um, I loved being able to follow that and um, you know, just even like the, how much they amplified their voices um, at a time that sports really needed it. Um, they were like, they were the backbone to that. Like they led the charge in so many different ways, especially through Black Lives Matter. Um, and it was almost like being, like paying very close attention. Like other leagues were kind of looking to the WNBA being like, oh, we should follow suit of that. <laughs> so I think that, if given the opportunity, the NWHL and women's hockey in general, like also will be doing that, um, you know, as long as they have the platform to do so. Mm -hmm. And it kind of comes back to, to um, like I find in hockey, like a number one complaint that a lot of my friends have is that the players just aren't relatable. Like in the NBA, they just have so much personality. But in the NHL, it's kind of media trained out of them, like right from the moment they kind of walk into the OHL or the CHL at any level. Um, but you kind of don't get that in the NWHL. A lot of them don't have that media training. Like you see Digit Murphy dancing in the hallway with her team after a win. Um, and just kind of, you know, seeing like these female athletes kind of step up in that way and be these marketable personalities. Like it's just, it's been a lot of fun to watch. Like it just, it adds that extra layer and it does help bring in those people who don't want to watch for hockey, but they want to watch for the athletes. And I think as like avid sports fans and, you know, you know, sports reporters in general, like being able to have an interview where you are so intrigued as to what the next thing an athlete is going to say, as opposed to you ask a question and then you kind of know what's coming um, just because of how well they have been. And I, I think that being able to just like really showcase the athlete, it's, and it speaks to what we were saying earlier. Um, if you, can show people who this athlete is, that gap between audience and athlete just closes so much more um, and is just so much more powerful. And I think that um, the NWHL has a really, really good grasp on that as well. Perfect. Um, so I've got one last question to kind of wrap things up unless you guys have any other questions or anything you'd like to bring up. Well, so I just, I, I just wanted to know, Paige, um, you spoke and, and you've spoken a little bit just to me in general uh you know when we were in school that the the media room was generally i think pretty a pretty positive experience for you i, I wanted to know if there was anyone who you can point to who was really uh you know kind of took you under their wing or really encouraged you anyone who you know meant a lot to you um it's to this day the same answer um you know first and foremost m my parents have always been my my top encouragers so when i'm actually in that room and in that space it's my producer chris um with with rogers he is phenomenal and i think in the beginning we didn't really know each other that well um but then as we worked together through like it was i think two broadcasts that we did i was like okay this guy he first of all was the one that you know 
you know, took the chance on me and let a, let a young girl come on air, but also um, has been my biggest cheerleader and support system and um, just like go to for, I know that there is no stupid question that I can ask because that's also a fear. It's like, oh, I may not know this about this player. And I think that I should probably know that, uh, Chris, um, you know, and just being able to have that relationship. Um, he is someone that kind of looked at me and was like, hey, stick with me. I'll get you to where you want to go. Um, and, you know, if you put your trust in me, I promise kind of thing. And we, uh, you know, he's just been phenomenal, phenomenal for me. Um, game in and game out um and someone that i consistently turn to when you know right before i'm going on air for for my intro or for whatever it is he's in my ear yes counting me down but also encouraging me being like hey remember who you are also smile more <laughs> love you <laughs> kind of thing so i love being able being able to have that and that's something that a lot of people don't kind of know is the fact that a lot of time like i'll come on air giggling and it's because he said something that you know made me laugh but i'm trying to be composed and it's those little things that he does that um i really like just am so appreciative of, of from from him perfect cameron do you have one last question uh, i think we covered it off for the most part perfect um so i guess the one thing that i'd really like to sign off on page is just what's maybe one piece of advice that you could give to any girls who are watching this um and like want to get into sport like what's one thing that you could say to keep them on that path and get involved um just know that you can do it that it not only like if you if you know that you can you will um and being able to say yes to opportunities and put yourself in places that are outside of your comfort zone because there's a lot of places that you're gonna go into and you know, kind of feel like, well, maybe I don't belong, or maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not this, or I'm not that, but like, you are those things. Um, you are, if you believe that you are, and um, just being able to become comfortable with things that feel uncomfortable, um, get used to that, and, and start to love that feeling, because um, once you are in those spaces, you're going to feel this, like, thrill that is unlike any other um, and just know that also um, there's a whole community of women in sports who are cheering you on and I can say from experience um, Claire I'm sure like the same is true for you reaching out to anyone on Twitter or Instagram who you know maybe you look up to or um, you kind of want to follow their path or anything and if you just shoot them a message and you know, want to talk to them, they will also want to help you as well. It's kind of like passing the torch. And so just, just do it. And um, I think that there's a very exciting world that is waiting for, for them, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just to go off that, some of the best advice I've ever gotten has been in Twitter DMs, just reaching out to female reporters going, Hey, like, how do I put together a demo reel? I think I sent that message to Haley Salvian, who's now covering the flames with the athletic. And she was like, here's what you do. And I got to put together my first demo reel with her help. You know, all, all the women out there, they're all looking to help and they're all eager and they're waiting for your DMs. And Claire, just to go off that, this is a perfect example. Literally that one morning, I think it was a Wednesday morning um, in second semester. And you told me that there was a girl on Twitter who was um, looking for, you know, girls to be intern for Women's Hockey Life. And I had an interview with Kyla. And, um, you know, two years later, now Kyla's one of my best friends, I'm going to be in her wedding in a couple years. And like, we run a podcast together. <laughs> um, so that's one of those things that she was someone that I was like, Oh, she's got a lot of experience. She has a wide network. I'll shoot her a message. Sure. And then we clicked and, you know, the rest is history. So yeah, that's, uh, there's a lot of power in that you might end up being, you know, their bridesmaid one day. <laughs> Who knows? No promises, though. <laughs> Thank you guys, um, like, so incredibly much for having me. I, oh. like, was so excited when, when I was you. asked to come on. Thank you for coming on. Like, I feel like we're punching up here. We got the famous Paige Martin to come <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Punch oh. up. <laughs> we we were pretty thrilled. I know, you know, not to get too into the into the the nitty gritty, but uh, with with the three of us, uh, I and I, I can say that uh, every time we saw uh, anyone from our graduating class at Western saw Paige Martin on air, it was a pretty thrilling experience. So uh, it was kind of a you know, uh, you got it. You you got to be in London. You got it. You got to make sure you see Paige Martin on on a night's broadcast, or you're not a true Londoner. So. 
Yeah. We're pretty, <laughs> pretty thrilled to have you on today, Paige. Thank you guys so much. That that really means the world to me. I have uh, my heart. My heart feels so full. I'll do this anytime you guys want. Like, yeah, <laughs> we, feel so good. If we keep the podcast coming, you know, you can come back on whenever you want. You're a close personal friend of the show now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Made it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Um, well, this is going to be the Bubble Buddies signing off. Thank you so much, Paige, for coming on. As we've said, thank you, Nick and Cameron. Cameron, thank you for trying to sort out the internet connection and kicking mm -hmm. mom and dad off of Amazon Prime so you could join us tonight. Um, I'm sure they'll love to hear that. Um, stay tuned for more content. As always, you know, check out the Bubble Buddies website and go six go. Let's go for a cup run here. Mm -hmm.